Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new get together organized by Helsinki Design Meetup. My name is Monica, and I'm going to host today's uh, meeting. Can you all hear me and see me well? Uh, I guess if maybe yes. Um, okay. Before starting, I would like uh, you to remind that for a smoother section, um, it is recommended to keep your mic and uh, camera off. So, uh, and if you're not familiar with um, the Google Meetup, um, let's give a quick look through to the um, tools and, and, and button that you can click. So on the top uh, right side, you have the chat in where you can interact um, and ask questions to our um, present presenters of today. Um, also, Laura is gonna take care of it. So she, she's gonna... Um, host and, and give you a quick comment or quick answer if it's needed. Um, also, if in the bottom down um, right, you can uh, check and, um, and modify your layout. Uh, we suggest the one uh, in the um, red, uh, red rectangle that it allows you to see the presentation at the, si the same time the one, uh, the person that is talking. So. Now, I hope that everybody is ready to attend today's panel's discussion. Uh, the team behind uh, Helsinki Design Meetup centered the talk uh, about the future of workplace. Um, because of the last happening worldwide, work and everything revolving around it changed drastically. The topic of smart working, uh, work-life balance, and remote working were already known and studied, but the pandemic had put an acceleration to the spread and the application of this concept worldwide. This is the reason why today we are going to touch on the topic of what is smart working and what will happen in the future of work. Um, just a quick sum up of today's schedule. So the first talk is gonna be Marta. Is gonna talk, she's gonna talk about smart offices. Then we are gonna have a quick time for question. Uh, five minute break. Uh, after, after the five minute break, uh, Marcus uh, will present the future workplace scenario. After that, also, we're going to have uh, time for a discussion and, and question, if, if needed. And then the last part of our meetup is going to be the Q&A with Giovanni Peracin, which is the Marketing and Brand Director at Arte. So, without... <clears throat> After uh, this, we can start with the presentation from Marta. Welcome, Marta. Yes. How are you? Thank you. Good, thank you. Nice. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, so Marta is a UX uh, designer at Process Genius, and she's also part of our uh, Helsinki Design Meetup volunteering team. Um, yes, I think we are ready to start. I leave you to it. Give a virtual applause to Marta. Yes, thank you. So, hello, my name is Marta Ratu and I am, as Monika said, um, a lead UX designer at Process Genius. At Process Genius, we make digital twins for office and industrial settings. And I also study at Metropolia at the moment and work on my thesis about smart offices. And that's why I'm talking about them today. I've worked with smart office solutions for the last uh, four years. And I will be talking about smart office solutions in general today. So what they are and how they work and not going into details or the technical um, aspects too much because the area is so broad. Um, here are the contents of my talk. Uh, I will first uh, talk about what are smart offices and then benefits of smart offices for office users and office managers. And then I will be talking a bit about Edge, which is a smart office building in Amsterdam. So what is a smart office? When an office or an organization surrounding is equipped by IoT devices and connected to internet, we can consider it as a smart place. In a smart office, the smart devices that are connected to internet create a smart ecosystem that we can manage, monitor, and control the work situation with them. So smart offices is basically a smart IoT technology based on office surroundings. IoT is the internet of things, 
this is a broad term for connected devices that communicate with other connected devices via embedded sensors and wireless networks, mainly cellular and Wi-Fi. And when to talking about IoT and smart offices, we have to also consider smart devices. And so smart device, um, as the name suggests, is an electronic gadget that is able to connect, share and interact with its user and other smart device. So uh, in concretic uh, way, uh, what's the benefit for office users? What's the smart office? Uh, Im improved employee schedule management, improved communication and improved staff efficiency. These are some of the benefits that some smart office users can have depending on uh, on the use technologies. So no time wasted on looking for office related info from all over the place when they are found in one solution. So for example, smart office app can suggest day schedule based on your today's tasks. If you have meeting from nine to 11, it can show you the route to the meeting room and then after meeting show what's for lunch and then reserve for you a quiet place to work for a couple of hours for that one difficult task you have that day. And after that, reserve a bit a late back corner of the office when you don't have to focus so much. Uh, this technology can make it easier to find suitable workplace and meeting rooms for all different kinds of activities. So you can actually focus on your actual work and what you are good at instead of preserving uh, workstations or meeting rooms every couple of hours. Uh, additional benefits of smart offices is improved work environment, temperature, light, humidity controls, support activity-based working. So many offices uh, nowadays are using the idea of hot desking. Hot desking is an organizational work space system in which desks are used by different people at different times on an ad hoc basis. So this means that when you are working in an office, you don't have your own workstation. But um, when you arrive to office on a morning, you have to find uh, suitable places for you to work. So this can be a workstation or a meeting room or a quiet uh, focusing place. Uh, so based on what you are working at the moment. So this will result in, in a kind of situation where you don't know where you're gonna work like, and also you don't know where your colleagues are gonna work. So um, smart office mm, functionalities often uh, help you find your uh, colleagues or your team members from an office surroundings as well when you have a uh, when you don't know where they are working so location sharing and uh, seeing what places are occupied and which ones are free are usually part of smart office solutions as well also you can um, bring to the smart office solution uh, companies messaging apps so you can use it to, with uh, for communicating with your colleagues as well and when you bring a lot of different kind of data and functionalities in a smart office app, uh, many tasks can be automated and staff can focus on their primary duty. Consequently, the professional goals will achieve faster and more accurate when you don't have to focus on sort of uh, meta work. So um, on top of like uh, office users also there are a lot of benefits for office managers. And a couple of these are optimizing building usage and energy usage. So when sharing desks and equipment stimulates not only more interaction between employees, but it can also cut down costs at the same time. Smart offices collect data and data can show how the office is used and tell tell you if spaces can be used more efficiently or maybe not even at all. So you can uh, follow the uh, 
of its usage in a more detailed level. The smart temperature and lightning in the workplace cause the use energy resources more efficiently and save energy. So uh, this will help with the energy usage. And you can also control the uh, own environment more accurately. And of course, increase security and cost savings if you are bringing uh, those functionalities in the smart office solution. So for example, security cameras, smart locks and door window sensors are the most popular devices for increased security in the office. And uh, cost savings can be results from space optimization and energy saving. So for example, if you are seeing that um, certain meeting rooms are not used, then you can figure out why they are not used. And uh, if they are not used, then <clears throat> the uh, cleaning schedules, for example, can be uh, fixed so that those um, rooms are not not clean so often that which are not in use. So when talking about IoT solution and smart offices, of course, we have to consider where the data is coming from. Because it needs to come, some, come somewhere. And one of the places is sensors. So sensors can measure, for example, carbon dioxide, temperature, movement, presence, or humidity. There are a lot of a lot of things uh, what sensors can do, but these are just few examples. And um, uh, for example, carbon dioxide level, you can um, see if the room is in use because uh, people mm, create carbon dioxide when they breathe. So you can use it in a sense of presence sensor also. And a mm, few years ago, we used uh, we built a smart office app that had a um, couple of sensors measuring uh, carbon dioxide, among other things, in office surroundings and also meeting rooms. And that office got um, visited by a burglar one night. And police and our client didn't know what time that burglar had visited. But when they opened the smart uh, office app, they noticed that one time during the night, the carbon, carbon dioxide level had risen. And this is the way they figured out what time did the burglar visit. So many of the measured data can be used in surprising ways when it's collected in one pool. These kind of surprises are found in um, only when, when you are starting to use and compare. Also, um, in smart office settings, uh, humans are pretty good at uh, noticing things. So, for example, if a meeting room has a um, broken um, light or somebody has dropped a coffee mug on the carpet, so people can then send information to the app that, okay, this room has this kind of thing that needs to be fixed or cleaned. Then that human can work as a kind of uh, data source as well. And one place get, uh, where you can get data is also other applications. So APIs to other application. Uh, API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. Each time that you use an app like Facebook, send an instant message or check the weather on your phone, you're using an API. So APIs in a smart office uh, context could be, for example, um, meeting room reservations, uh, for example, in Outlook or Google or whatever application uh, you have them in and bring them from that application to the smart office application, then uh, the smart office application can, can uh, so, uh, like see which rooms are reserved and which ones are free. And also this will help for the office management to compare the um, reserve, uh, the calendar reservations to occupancy sensor, when you can see that if the room is actually in use uh, when it's 
reserved because some offices have a uh, difficulty in like when people reserve meeting rooms but they are not uh, using them then and then there's problem of not uh, having enough meeting rooms so these kind of uh, combinations of data uh, bring uh, benefits to uh, everyone who uses the same office and then of course when we are talking about an office it's in the building then building automation is one one possibility where to bring data to smart office solution the building automation system core functionality is to keep building climate within a special range light rooms based on an occupancy schedule monitor performance and device failures in all systems and provide mail function alarms so basically this means that building automation system has a lot of data about the building and of course it of the office as well and um, smart devices so these can be smart coffee makers curtains lights phones whatever you have in the office and for one example of, uh, of smart um, building and smart office it's edge in amsterdam Edge is a 40,000 square meter office building in Amsterdam. It was completed in 2014 and it's the world's most sustainable office building. It integrates numerous smart technologies that, to create adaptable and intelligent work spaces. Edge, Edge produces more electricity than it consumes. It has 80% more efficient LED lighting system than conventional illumination and rainwater flushes the toilets and it's used in the water gardens as well. It has sensors for detecting motion, light, temperature, humidity and carbon dioxide levels. Coffee makers can recognize the user and prepare users favorite drink. Smart garage identifies vehicles, points them to available parking spot and brightens and dims the lights as the drivers arrive and leave. So based on this collected data the building management can then determine where cleaning is needed and if the rooms are used equally if some spaces are not used they can be closed for resource saving and office users app assigns work spaces that best fit users preferences allows users to control the brightness of the lighting it can see calendar and show directions to meeting rooms. Uh, it also allows uh, adjust the climate of the particular area, help find different locations in the building and track users' progress on the gym. Uh, these are just a few examples. Uh, if you are more interested about Edge, you can Google Edge Amsterdam and see YouTube videos and other materials. So, Thank you. This was a quick introduction for smart offices. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you, Marta. Very nice in presentation. Um, let's see indeed if someone has uh, some question about your presentation and about smart offices in particular. Uh, but I was thinking that um, you have been working in the um, in this field, in the field of smart offices for the last five years. So I'm sure you might have some insight into, into the pro and cons of, of such, a, such a thing as smart offices. Mm. Can you tell us more, more about it? Of course, it uh, depends on uh, what kind of uh, smart office solution you have, because it, it's, uh, you don't, there are no standards of what makes an office a smart office, but it's like combination of technologies and so on. But uh, one controversial uh, functionality that is uh, currently in some uh, smart office applications is that location sharing. So where you can see that your colleagues, if, if they are working in so, uh, some particular places and so on, because this will uh, kind of colla clash with um, GDPR. Mm -hmm. But it's not a it's it's not a necessarily problem, but that's uh, certainly something uh, that is usually like 
Yeah. So in a sense, they could help a lot in this moment in where you kind of need to know how many person is there in a meeting room or without actually walking there, but just quickly mm. look at them. Uh, you can just look at an app and, and have that information. And um, so we collected some questions from the community as well. Um, so what do you think um, are the benefits that employees has from working from a smart offices? Maybe you also mentioned about it. Yeah, well, benefits of uh, uh, in the smart office. Well, actually, at least in Edge, uh, Amsterdam, there was a huge increase of people who wanted to work in the building, which is so, so sustainable and uh, it's uh, comfortable to work in. So it seems to at least like um, increase the motivation of people who uh, are there, that they actually want to be there because it's so... It, uh, the building works for them and not like you are not going in the building who kind of like and, yeah yeah and it's, a, yeah it's not the location it's like support you it supports your work yes and i think that's really important um also we have a question from irma so um well thank you for your presentation she says and then would you see that majority of the smart offices office functionalities aim for efficiency efficiency or comfort for the end user such as the office worker yeah that's a good question um yeah i think uh efficiency and comfort uh, i think both are um in a key element of the functionalities that are for office workers. Uh, office workers' uh, point of view is um, uh, most smart office solutions at this point are for office managers. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of coming in a kind of trend to make it for office workers as well. So I think the uh, kind of the functionalities that are created uh, now. Uh, are for like efficiency and comfort. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, in a sense, for manager, there is a difference between smart offices and and normal offices. Um, is it there also a difference in between for the employees, or do you think they see less this? Um... Well, I think. Uh the office workers who work in a smart office uh, have the benefit of like uh, it's easier to find uh, workstations and and reserve meeting rooms and so on depending on the functionalities you have in the smart office solution you have in your yeah. office because not all of them for example have the possibility to control the temperature or the lighting yeah, of course. Um, so, if uh, there is not any more question, I guess uh, we can call our five-minute break. Thank you, Marta, again for your presentation. I think everybody enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, okay, so see you in uh, five minutes from now. Welcome back. Um, so now we are moving on, on to our second presentation of the day, Marcus, um, which she's going to present the future workplace scenario. Welcome, Marcus. Thanks. I think your camera you. is on. Yeah. Yes, now we see you. Um, OK, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, okay, so um, Marcus is graduated from Alto University and is an uh, interior architect at the moment. Um, his interest in uh, research pushed him to uh, carry out a thesis on the future of the workplace and in collaboration with Noll. Um, so if you can share your presentation. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Showing? So everything, yes, now it's working. Okay, great. Perfect. Everybody can hear you and see you well. I leave it to it. Okay. Uh, so my name is Markus Holste. Uh, as mentioned, I'm an interior architect based in Helsinki. Uh, and I'm going to talk about 
future workplace scenarios based on my thesis research conducted in support of the furniture company Knoll. Uh, for the content of my presentation, uh, I will first go through briefly uh, of the theoretical and research part uh, and then go to kind of start of the future workplace scenarios developed based on it. So for the research and site observations conducted in uh, late 2019. Uh, where I began from was kind of this large base of what has happened in the society, uh, described, for example, by the British architect Jack Self as uh, we are everywhere, anytime and everywhere at once, where the most influential is the digitalization and the creation of new kind of social networks. Uh, then why this is highly important in the office design is that information technology is the principal agent of change in office work and design. And the third quotation in here uh, is also important to remember as stated by Japanese uh, architect Kisho Kurokawa, that technology does not take root when it's cut off from the culture and tradition. So the context also becomes very important to understand. Uh, so for the digitalization, what has kind of happened very briefly as a part of it is a rise or um, more digital tools, platforms and services. And they together create the, the modern networks and global connectivity. And import, importantly, this is um, used and accessed by more of mobile and remote devices for individuals. And this is one of the accelerators that has enabled us to, to work more self-managed or remotely. And uh, although it's often seen in very negative light, it also is shown to help with uh, things as work-life balance. But what comes very important in it is the adaptation of the corporate culture and the culture of work. So both the employees and the employers need to create the guidelines and the structure of working remotely and, and see that there's uh, meaningful ways of connect, connection uh, to information and to tools that they need to, to create do the work that they need to do. So, of course, one of the, the biggest talks, what, it, what has happened is work going everywhere. And uh, commercially, this has mostly been shown in shared co-working spaces or shared workspaces in general. My focus was more on the corporate uh, campus or the, the corporate, corporate workplace, which as very like skipping as a very brief introduction to the history of the corporate workplace uh, after industrialization has gone from uh, open plan office to different types of adaptable systems as cubicle farms or others. And most recently, especially due to the, the COVID-19 lockdowns to domestic work or work going to the domestic space uh, so how has then what has happened uh, physically in in this is that there are mo more and more of the technology we use is uh, remote and mobile. How it's shown in space is also that there needs to be different kind of projections and screens, of course, to access the digital information. And very importantly, as more and more information goes to the cloud, uh, the physical storage is going towards internal and external server rooms which are uh, non-human architecture and that space is then occupied by different kind of things as indoor horticulture or uh, personal lockers or other things so where i conducted my site observations was in germany in microsoft munich and adidas then in different co-working spaces and, and startup accelerators in Italy and France and corporate offices of different professions in the UK. And uh, from some of the site observation visits, I constructed a kind of breakthrough of the spatial organization, what is happening. And uh, the two in the left in here were uh, 
uh, corporate offices of different professions and they showed kind of very uh, normal type of spatial plan of having a typical open um, workspaces with a desk and an office chair management which is in here the darker lines uh, in close by the natural light or in kind of core locations to see the other workstations and then very clear borders between uh, external visitors and the employees and employers or the staff of the company but what was happening in all of the locations was an increase of kind of informal um, furnishing so sofas and lounge chairs and such and in the largest corporation which was also most using the flexible uh, or going towards the flexible work what was actually happening was that the the typology of the workstations itself was changing from this uh, large use of, of different types of desks and chairs into uh, providing kind of different areas for private lounge chairs or sofas for collaboration or then different heights and shapes of desks to, to either work in privacy or in more social interaction. And what were kind of the building blocks of all of the offices were more or less uh, in every, no matter what's the profession, reservable rooms uh, were everywhere for uh, private uh, work or then for meetings. And, and interestingly, also the meeting rooms were starting to kind of be more modified by the employees or the needs of the corporation to something else than just what is represented in here as uh, rooms with a table and chairs. Uh, the tables and the open plan office was everywhere with small uh, spatial divisions and what is here was the high backrest seats and uh, sofas or lounge chairs were always used to kind of break up the space and and create uh, more informal settings so the the modern office no matter what's the profession uh, because of course it changes uh, quite drastically if it's if a lawyer's office or if a new tech company there's very different kind of needs for social interaction or privacy but it, interesting interestingly in all of those uh, the use of different types of uh, chairs also used as private uh, workstations was uh, used so this was kind of very brief of of what was happening in the site observation or what could be seen in the site observation visits. So then now to give kind of basis of the future workplace scenarios that were conducted based on, on the observations and interviews. So uh, also for kind of create a base for, for the future of workplace. Uh, what is very apparent is the, the need of having different layers of, of supporting different kinds of needs of uh, generations. So the, the oldest generations could be more uh, prone to going to a workplace that is focusing on ergonomy and very task based work. Then there is the, the, the flexible and collaborative space uh, that is here represented in the center. And what needs to be also taken into account is that there will be the youngest generations that have been more trialing with kind of third space or and uh, working as nomads. So the six uh, main focuses that were taken from all of the site observations and the research beforehand uh, of the theoretical part uh, were these that the first the campus location. So of course, as we go more uh, flexible. Uh, and uh, working remote, the location of the campus doesn't need to be necessarily anymore in the central urban areas. Uh, you can find different benefits from, from going also elsewhere. What was happening in all of the visited locations was uh, inclusion of some kind of collaborative and activity centric uh, spaces that were, uh, for example, studios or, or workshops to create physical or digital prototypes and these were used for the corporation and also could be used by the employees 
for their personal things. And this was something that they could participate in. Uh, what it has been and is very important is the, the presence of the virtual or digital and, uh, and physical work in the space. So you need to somehow connect the, the two kind of very different realms of work. And uh, once we go more, uh, once the, the workplace goes to more flexible, it needs to have uh, more focus on creating the work community and connection to corporate culture uh, differently. As also when working remotely, uh, the personal pr preference plays a different type of role. So, uh, of course, you would be then having more uh, time and effort of, of choosing the, the location by your uh, preferences of what kind of seat or what kind of desk you wish. And um, not just to focus on the social interaction and collaboration, it's very important to understand the seclusions. So uh, certain amount of people don't go just for the uh, connectivity or the, the community into the workplace. There's also a certain need of creating the routine uh, and the seclusions to have the private moments of, of making your work inside of the workplace. So for the future scenarios, for uh, first for the campus location, uh, there were three kind of scenarios that could happen. Uh, more of the dialogue of the urban city and the campus. So if the corporate workplace would stay in the city, uh, there would be the campus in the city where there could be very clear uh, distinction between the work and the leisure. So to create a system of divide, dividing, dividing these two elements inside the urban areas, where then the other one would be the complete opposite of the campus is the city where everything would be everywhere. So, uh, for example, a hybrid workspaces would start to become a part of the apartment buildings uh, and everything would be leisure and work. And last would be the campus without the city when we go to more working remotely, the corporate uh, campus could relocate to peripheries and this would enable to have different types of uh, life stability for the, the employees as also large facilities where you could access uh, big tools and, and spaces. But uh, still the younger generations would need to have the adaptability of, of having the freedom of choosing or also how they work based on their demands, which would require at new types of satellite locations. Uh, what was happening already in the workplaces uh, was some types of changes in the reservable rooms. And in one of the future workplace scenarios, the, the reservable rooms of the workspace would start to adapt to, to host more kind of functions for activity and collaboration in groups. So instead of just having the table, you could uh, adjust by corporate and professional needs the space to be something that you really come together and, and work in as a group. For the digital and physical space, uh, once the most of the physical documentation is going, what is left of is mostly the servers or then the personal lockers. And this could be something that this is something that no matter how flexibly you work, you need to, or you mostly access these spaces. So uh, natural evolution would be to kind of use this space to connect the digital and the physical uh, realms. And this also becomes to the importance of the work community and connection to the corporate culture. So more flexible we go, uh, more the workplace scatters, more it needs to also focus on the core of bringing people uh, fastly together once they enter the space, if they come a few days a week. Uh, mostly for when moving to the peripheries, uh, it's important that uh, personalization comes something. So you want to find a place that uh, you can find yourself in, which would then mean that uh, new types of hybrid workspaces would be created in other uh, commercial facilities as showrooms or others, but these would be then very personalized by the corporation as also for the smaller work communities inside.
And last uh, scenario of what would happen in the future of workplace would be the new kind of seclusions, uh, new kind of divisions. So uh, in this scenario, there would be kind of uh, evolution of the cubicle farm, but instead of creating very individual spaces, this would be larger units kind of as houses that could then host a space for uh, adaptable by professional needs. And then further always have a connection between it, each other. So they wouldn't create this kind of very anonymous space, but instead, even though they provide seclusions, they also bring some form of connectivity to others. So this was a very short kind of introduction of, of what was uh, in late 2019, the kind of future workplace scenarios. And to kind of conclude in in few things, uh, once the, the work goes more remote and self-managed, uh, it it, there's high importance of the corporate culture and the culture of work to adapt. Uh, it doesn't just happen in the physical space. And once uh, the spaces started to use more kind of informal work settings and workstations, the spatial program itself in, in a level of a floor showed less um, significance in organizing the space by power relations or traditional hierarchies of who would be located where. And uh, one thing that, that the last thing that changed uh, a lot of how the implementation of, of new kind of office would happen is the local tradition and the cultural habits, especially, for example, the, the ways of communication are very different culturally from, for example, from north to south. But of course, this is something that has now kind of seen a very rapid trial of, of in everywhere kind of where you can, you are pushing towards uh, working as remote as possible. So that that was the brief look into the future workplace scenarios. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. It was very impressive work. Um, okay, so meantime, we are waiting if someone has some comments or, or some questions to ask you. Um, uh, I, I was wondering, because in your thesis research, uh, you have been deeply analyzing uh, the mindset of the corporation in relation with the urban context and, the, and its employees. So let's say that a large corporation starts working more remotely and provide a flexible workplace uh, to the employee. What kind, of, um, what kind of difficulties do you see it might happen in organizing work and with the workspace? Uh, one thing that uh, was very important is that probably now also a lot of uh, workplaces can see that the, the management of the work is actually it's uh, it's not super difficult always for just employees but it's very difficult for kind of the middle management of the ones who are responsible in the middle of the process so they they got a lot of stress pro from it so there was a lot of development of how to organize the work and it takes quite an effort and one thing in the space a, a physical thing was that uh, when there are no dedicated spaces and once things are more kind of different types of spaces, it's completely new type of office. So, of course, it takes a lot of effort to understand, like, how do you actually work in the space? Like, if, if everything is kind of new, you just need to adapt constantly to, to understanding what, what is this space that I'm going to work now in. Yes. Um... And also, yeah, I mean, you you carried out this research before, just before the outbreak of coronavirus. Um, and do you see um, your scenarios uh, to change slightly, drastically, or at all uh, by this situation? And if 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 they change, how do they change? What do you see happening? Uh, well, it's kind of. It's very kind of daily basis as now of how it will change. But um, well, as I mentioned already before, kind of one thing that was uh, one thing is now in interesting is that every kind of culture has been, or no matter what is your background, if you can, you have been trialing probably working remotely. 
and uh, that kind of changes at, at least in a larger scale of how it works. And then, well, one thing that uh, is probably now that everybody is kind of refiguring the, the meaning of the, the workplace. So it's not anymore like the office isn't something that is just there and you go there every day. Now you actually might mm. consider a lot of like, what is, why am I going there or mm. what do we actually gain from it? Even yes, so in a sense, sorry. Yeah, no worries. So in a sense, it, it goes back to the Marta's presentation where she was saying that the smart offices are also helping and, and kind of um, making so that the employees are more willing of going back to the office. Yeah, yeah, and one thing probably, I mean, the kind of, I don't know what's the amount of it, but physical, like being physically present is also something that uh, at least in some situations is kind of very thought for of, of wishing to have mm -hmm. back in some forms. Yeah. Or then, and, uh, or, yeah, depending on um, your preference. What I was thinking is that you, you talk also about periphery. And in a sense, in this in this time, a lot of people has gone kind of escaping from the city center and the urban uh, conglomerates. So um, how would you, can you describe more of your uh, periphery or what do you think now could happen if people go like at their uh, summer house or back to, to where they were maybe uh, based before moving inside the city because of uh, the new job or so on? Well, I mean, at least uh, the, there is the, I still think that, it, because one thing that was at least beforehand, kind of, you don't want to feel not like people also go to the urban areas to feel connected to, to a lot of things around them. So having some forms of, uh, of uh, adjustment of, like the, the, the peripheric location cannot be just a place that you go and you feel that that's going to be the end of mm. your life, at least in a larger, like, of course, there are always certain mm -hmm. amount of people that especially now have thought of that they want to go back to, to a certain place. But if it would be a larger scenario, there needs to be kind of more of a systematic approach of how you can gain from that peripheric location, but also make it kind of slightly connected now that we have more devices and mm -hmm. and platforms to access other places also yeah and uh what do you think people would um so ah one one thing i was actually thinking before it was um in your uh research on the bay on the field so you've been visiting a lot of um co-working spaces and offices uh, around europe uh, what is the thing that kind of uh, one of the main um, things that you have been seeing in there or if there has been something that caught your attention in, the, in some certain level uh, that make you think about uh, one of the scenarios that you then developed? Uh, well, I mean, there are kind of a lot of things. Of course, one that is happening everywhere is uh, the the change with the, the physical documentation. So there is kind of vast amounts of uh, already before now, of course, when there's like concepts of six feet office or other types of office concepts for what is happening now, but there was already before kind of what is the space that you actually need to, to make an office. So there's kind of this finding the balance of once you have less cabinets or less physical storage or things become flexible of, of how do you actually build the office? And it also a lot of times was involving some kind of uh, like a lot of development with the employees and the users of the space. So it wasn't just like a ready-made plan, but you design 80% of the office and then you start to adjust by that. Like you have a set of rooms and, and desks and then you start to understand like, okay, so we actually work like this and this. Okay, so maybe a bit less... Um kind of design until the end, but rather uh, deciding while uh, employees are in there or maybe even service designer can, can help the, in the process with the employees and 
and and thing like that but uh, okay so um i see that sami actually is asking if you have a link to your to your thesis and uh, laura already gave the alto uh, doc oh. um file okay. so um, yeah i think that yeah that is probably like the best yeah. okay so if there is a, not any more question then we are gonna take a five minute break and we are coming back with the last part of our meetup, which is the Q&A with, um, with Giovanni from Harper. See you in five minutes. Hello, welcome back. Okay, so now uh, we are moving to the last part of our meetup. As announced earlier, we are going to have the Q&A with Giovanni Peracin. Um, who is the Arper Brands and Marketing Director. Uh, for the one who is not familiar with Arper, Arper creates seating, table, and accessories for public and domestic environments. Um, curiosity and sensitivity are part of their philosophy, and Arper's marketing team is always open to inspiration, always mindful of context, and into researching and understanding the world we are living in. Um, in a time where the future of work uh, will need to be uh, reshaped in still an unknown form, we wanted to have a chat with Giovanni to know how Arper is viewing the future of workplace. So let's welcome Giovanni. Hello, Hello Giovanni. How are you? Uh, we are fine, thank you. How are you? Very well, very well. Hello, everybody. I hope that you see me well. Okay. Yes, now we see you and hear you very well. So. I hope that our audience also will have some interesting question for you. Um, but we also gathered some um, uh, question from our community before. Um, so first of all, how do you think the future of workplace will be from our point of view? It's the big question of this, uh, of this moment. What I'm hearing, I mean, what I'm uh, uh, learning a lot, uh, uh, reading in uh, a lot of articles in this uh, in this uh, period is that uh, depending on the uh, on the countries, but uh, more or less there is this big uh, uh, question mark, uh, question mark about uh, um, the, the, the home working. I mean, most of the companies that we are <clears throat> talking with and we are reading, they are really pushing the people to stay at home, mm. and uh, we call it the smart. The smart working. We don't know if it's still a smart working or it's only home working because it's mm. uh, and, uh, more likely. Yeah, and uh, I would I would I would love to call it flex working, um, and I would love that in the future people will uh, have the opportunity to, to to take their decision in terms of places where to work. What was saying, Marcus? I think I agree with him about uh, uh, <clears throat> that the people. They uh, most of the people that really they they really don't like to work at home. I mean, they, I think they are taking this opportunity, and I think it's an interesting opportunity, but only for one or two days a week. Mm. Um, I was talking with some important uh, companies, and they are saying that uh, in this moment in U.S., but in Europe too, they, they would like to do in a week like two days at home to two days in the, in the headquarter. And the other two days, and the other day, the other day or I don't know, the rest will be uh, in another place. And the, the other places that the, the, the are new places to me that are going to be, I don't know, if uh, co-working or um, places where the people can work and connect with other people mm -hmm. close to their home. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's in a uh, sense like uh, in between work spaces, like something that is not home but it's not work, uh, maybe not the big offices that we were used to, or, or something in between might be also something that might uh, come. Um, I was yeah. thinking uh, about the flex work, is quite a nice uh, definition to, to kind of describe in what stage are we also now because. It looks like that every possible surface is at home can, can become a desk. And um, I, I do believe if people want to go back to the office, uh, of course, it might be a bit difficult because what I think the people miss the most maybe are the human touch and then the interaction because uh, myself, at least, I've seen that the amount of communication and, and 
the, the, the data that you can transmit by face to face is way higher than, than through Zoom or, or any other online um, meeting. So um, I think yeah. that people might. Yeah, and what I think is uh, it's, uh, it's really important because I, I, I agree with you 100% in terms of the people who really need to, to stay together and, uh, and, and we need uh, to, to be part of a community all the time. Uh, there is something really important that uh, I learned where we, um, I mean, during the, the, the lockdown in Italy, and I was having a lot of uh, video calls, conference calls, meetings, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, digital meetings, and uh, and we have been really effective in in in, in creating a lot of uh, different activities and a lot of processes and a lot of we have done a lot of work, but but because uh, we uh, we know each other, so there is a trust uh, and we know how we work and and we know personally. But in the in the future, when you're starting working with people that you don't know, I think mm. the trust uh, between the people is starting between meetings. Mm. It's not during the meeting. The meeting is really a formal way of uh, creating something together. But between meetings, you have this little chat. Uh, you look at the face of the people. You ask about how is your mother or I don't know, how is your <laughs> And in this way, you create the trust and you create the empathy and uh, you can really start working in the right way. If we miss this, I think it's something that it will be really a big issue in the future. So how do you see, because of course then corporates uh, will need to adapt also to this need of, um, of, of kind of make, making it possible to people to connect and, and um, kind of empathically uh, in the office. But of course... Uh, they might need to do it in different ways because uh, we might need to be working in three days at home and then the other two in the office and still uh, kind of apart. So how do you think that the corporate culture, um, corporate culture will be influenced by the, the current situation? So what, for example, Arbor, what, what is it trying to change or any other uh, inspiration that you've got? Um. But in terms of workplace, uh, in the, in the, in, from the architectural point of view, uh, I think that there will be a big change in terms of uh, uh, workplace in, in the headquarters because there will be, uh, the, I mean, in our way of thinking and, 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 and designing the, the, the spaces, we all the time think about uh, how to connect the people when, when they are together. And, um, and, and so we think about lounges, we think about places where the people can really have the wellness in terms of colors, in terms of uh, places, and they can really feel safe uh, and they feel connected with other people in the workplace. So we think uh, that uh, we, we really push the idea of stay together in the right way, in the safe way, so that the right distance and using color and style and design to create a very nice place where the people yeah. can be, feel and for, well and can work well. And, um, and, for, and for sure there's gonna be like a, a need for, like Arper does home working um, kind of environments. Like as, as, I, as I know, Arper kind of creates furniture that are for bo both for office and home. So in a sense, um, this, um, Kind of particular sector of, of um, home becoming office. Uh, there has been a lot of new products coming in, also from uh, uh, small uh, wood uh, carpenter about making tables adaptable for home or like uh, chairs, for example, uh, office desk uh, chair that can work in both. They don't look to office. Um, in a sense, that's also what Arper does. And um, do you? Do you see that uh, this is gonna be kind kind of becoming increasing uh, also even more than before? This uh, absolutely. Uh, I can tell you, Monica, that uh, um, when I joined uh, uh, Arper, uh, I think what what was what is uh, one of the most important things that uh, Harper has done in the past and is doing all the time is bringing home in the future in the in the office. Sorry. Because uh, um, our style is, uh, uh, when we talk about the soft, uh, uh, the soft uh, sense of uh, artwork, is that we, 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 
we all the time talk about, uh, um, and we always think about the humanistic approach. So we think about product that doesn't look for the office, but they are technical. So like, uh, and and so we bring uh, home at all at the office. So it's easy to use some of our product for the office in your house because they don't look like for the office, but they have all the the functionality of uh, like a, an office chair or tables and all this kind of things. Yeah, so and I think it's everything. really important to yeah that aspect. And I, and I think uh, uh, for sure all this uh, soft effect. Uh, is something really important because you don't you have to really all the time create your 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 workplace where you can really feel well, and uh, um, and with the with the lockdown and uh, what we uh, we have done in, in the last uh, uh, period that where we are really in our houses working with all the people stay connected on the Zoom all the time, it was really important to have your places your your product and. Mm. The, very well there, and uh, for sure this is something that the people uh, will uh, will look for. At the same time, they will look for some other places because I'm I'm really sure that uh, stay at home, uh, going forward. I mean, it will be something that the people will stay one day maximum a week, uh, but other days they really want to stay in contact with other people. Perhaps find places where they can find. Uh, other or, you know, other friends or employees like them or a community of people. I don't know. If I'm a creative guy, I want to go in a cool place where I can meet other people. Yeah. Like me. Or because at the end, it's really important for your brain, for your ideas. You, it's important to and and at the end, it's uh, it's uh, it's safer because you can use uh, technology or internet or in places where you can really be, um, be more yes. safe. And also, uh, I was thinking maybe uh, I, this is just like uh, my imagination. There could be also space um, in within the building where you are living. Uh, for example, here in Finland, we have the sauna, the communal sauna. Uh, so everybody kind of owns uh, that are in that building um, owns a bit of the the sauna, and they can go and and have uh, their time in there for one two hours. So I was thinking it would be also interesting to have such a space, but in the working aspect. So a small office for the for the one who are living in there, so that they don't need to commute because also the commuting is might be a bit a big problem, like uh, meaning train or buses or tram or whatever. Uh, but they could just go upstairs and maybe be within the super small um, kind of community that they they are in. So um, it would be interesting just to know if any anyone has, <laughs> has been kind of starting doing that as well. Um, one thing is um, they're asking, um, how does the work culture environment change from country to country? Um, do you think Italy might be, I guess, might be really different from, from, from Italy? Um, but uh, in the reality, the, the um uh, I can tell you about some uh, calls that I had with some people in the US or in UK or in Italy. More or less, we, the, the, what we ex I mean during the lockdown, it has been really difficult for all of us, but I think uh, in other countries the people has worked very well. Um, depends depending on the job that you have, but I mean, normally that the company has done their job and the people were working from home. Now, what I see is that in the US, for, for sure, they, they are more interesting. Uh, they are really happy about uh, the idea of not, uh, I don't know, taking the train for one hour and commute. Mm. Um, they are really happy that uh, they can do only one day. It's like a I can be free to decide which day of the week I, I, I have to commute and, and spend a lot of time in, in the car or in the bus or in the train. What the, in the US, they are, perhaps they are, they are waiting for new spaces, of new opening, I mean, new, new, new spaces close to their house, like if someone is living in New Jersey, mm -hmm. they don't want to go to Manhattan anymore because it's, uh, a lot of time, and in Manhattan you have, a, you have taken elevator 
and you have to wait a lot of time to take the elevator because now it's only for uh, not for a lot of people. And uh, but in New Jersey, you, they need to have a, a co-working office that they don't have in this moment. Mm. So uh, there there will be a lot of things uh, happening in the in different countries and new workplaces that can be uh, I don't know the Starbucks or it can be a uh, 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 hotel chain that will start mm. working, working places in, um, and in Italy. Is, in Italy, I think we um, the, the, the the situation was uh, was really strange because normally mm. we try to go to the office and uh, this idea of uh, uh, having all the people uh, for the leaders to have all their team uh, uh, in the office is really important. But at the same time. Is pushing us to have more trust in the people mm. and uh, to learn how to do a real smart working. So I think mm. it's been a, a great lesson for us, for organization, big organization or medium organizations, to to work well together and uh, to redefine the way of working together and be more precise. Because if you do a video call, you have to be really precise in terms of goals. Mm. Kind of things. So I, I see all these kind of things very in a positive way. Mm. Because, uh, the opportunity to think all the time how we work, how we work with other people is uh, it's, uh, something that no. is not normal. So, in a sense, it's like if there will be like a reset, like this uh, pandemic put like if there, before there were like um, cultural differences. So, for example, Marcus being uh, in Europe, you could see every different in the offices or. From USA, they have another culture. In Italy, we have also another culture. Uh, well, I'm Italian, so I talk for myself. I'm in Finland right now. But um, in a sense, it's like if this pandemic has reset everything uh, that we had different in culture, and then kind of we can start building from like a worldwide situation where everybody needs to work from home, no matter how your work of, of how your home is, you will need to have a place where you actually put your computer and work. So in a sense, I think it's interesting also uh, this um, flat um, kind of starting point. Um, I have a, uh, there is Marcus actually, <laughs> that is asking a question um, um, about flexible office. So what kind of qualities does Harper or Giovanni in this case see important to create uh, the personal feeling and connection to the furniture when people use less time in one specific space? Um, yeah, it's a very interesting question. I think it's, uh, uh, for us, it's really important what, what, what I was saying before. It's really having uh, um, this uh, uh, soft environment. So all the time to create a place where you can really feel well with the right colors, with the right the style. Uh, I mean, in a homey place all the time. So the people, they will not find perhaps uh, their furniture where they come back to the office or in some other places, but they will feel uh, uh, they will feel a place that is really human mm. and uh, done for I mean designed for them. And, uh, yeah. So I think I think the style and the colors and most of it I would say the colors are really important in this case. Because when we think about all the, uh, if we do something like uh, walls between spaces, or we think about uh, chairs or other furniture where the color is, is really important. It's all the time really important to create that, or this sense of uh, uh, being a place that you really like. Mm. That you're relaxed into, yes, or that you feel part of. For me, what it makes, um, kind of, that I feel I am uh, kind of uh, relaxed uh, or welcome in a space is like also uh, what you said, of course. Um, so having kind of uh, soft and, uh, and welcoming uh, kind of ambience, but also uh, the personalization. I feel that I need to personalize, uh, or even on my desk, like a little cup, it's enough, but kind of that it makes kind of taking property of, of small place that I have. So um that's that's what it makes it also for me and of course a nice office in where, where to be also at ease that you don't feel you are too constrict in either your uh, office desk or, or 
your uh, um, yeah your coffee uh, machine. Yeah. Okay, but um, yeah. Sorry, Monica, but to me, it's uh, uh, <clears throat> in the future would be really difficult to personalize your place. I mean, because mm. what we what we would be uh, moving between spaces, like in, uh, from home to other places. We will have our laptop, I would say. We will have our, That's true. And uh, what to me will be really important is to be in a place that you can, I mean, with the technology, you can book your places. You book your place to know that you have your place booked so you can go there. You can see that it will be important to see that it's safe. So it's the place that is everything about uh, safe, not only about the, the COVID, but uh, safe in terms of the internet connection. Mm. And um, so you can connect and send messages that are from your company and stuff. Um, and at the same time, places where you see uh, a nice environment, uh, nice people. Yes. So um, there is a lot of things that uh, the people has to really restart to think about it to have uh, mm -hmm. the right atmosphere. Yeah. That's actually true, that I haven't uh, actually thought about it. But of course, yeah, by moving every day, you, it's really difficult to personalize. Maybe something that it reminds you of a place where you feel yourself. So maybe that's that's uh, the result that we are looking for um, in the future. Um, there is a question about maybe one of the last uh, before we leave. Um, so, Ar um, has Arper taken inspiration out of this COVID-19 time for new office furniture and what ways, if you can answer this? Um, uh, I think that it's not about COVID-19, it's about, uh, our inspiration is all about, is all about, uh, is all the time about uh, is how we can be together. And uh, so, thinking about and designing product uh, inspired with uh, inspired on, on the functionality that we, we normally have. And uh, so we work with designers that are thinking about the future of workplaces, the future of the home. Uh, mm -hmm. of uh, regarding COVID-19, we don't think that we have to focus a lot about something that happened. Uh, that will change uh, a lot uh, about urban safety, uh, will change a lot about wellness, that the people mm -hmm. now uh, they don't want to. They, 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 we are not uh, anymore running on the wheel, but we are outside of the wheel, and we are thinking what we really want in our life. So how mm -hmm. we get a place that we want, we love to work, in which place we would like to work in, and uh, we, we think more. So in terms of designing and projecting uh, future products, it's about uh, and asking to the people what they really love for the future. Uh, think about the new functionality, think about new workspaces, the new work, mm -hmm. the new way of working, new way of living, new way of using your life. And uh, mm -hmm. this is our main uh, focus. And I think we will see that soon. <laughs> yeah. Maybe soon, sooner than later, because I mean, future, I think, in my opinion, is already here and is pushing our back to, <laughs> to go forward forward and, and far, farther but okay so um, it's almost time to wrap up so I want to thank you again uh, Giovanni for being with us and all and uh, I also want to say that actually I'm in the Eugenta space right now and um, uh, Arper uh, has launched this new product in uh, Milan Design Week uh, virtual Milan Design Week in 2020 and the new products are in showcase uh, right now at Urgente Showroom um, in Helsinki. And uh, you can see the email if you want to book an appointment, it's open to you. And uh, by just coming here, you can see and sit down in this soft uh, furniture that, that are um, launched this year. So um, if, if you don't have anything else to, to add, I think we can wrap it up here. Okay, perfect. And um, I want to thank you everyone for being today with us. Uh, a big thank you to the, um, the behind the scene uh, Helsinki design team, uh, Laura, Lisa and Marta. Uh, this talk will be, will be uploaded in, um, in YouTube tomorrow or very soon. 
Um, we are planning our next panel discussion in November, so please stay tuned. We, you can follow us in Twitter, uh, Facebook, and the Meetup uh, website. So, I uh, hope you have a great Thank night. You. Ciao, bye-bye. Ciao. See you all soon, and stay tuned. Bye.